you think of memorable freshman performances in college football, you think De'Anthony Thomas. Maybe some people think Trevor Lawrence. Maybe you could even go all the way back to Jamal Holloway in Oklahoma and when as a true freshman, he became the first freshman quarterback to lead his team to a national title victory. Or maybe you can keep it recent, you can go Shador Sanders, right? Those guys truly made impacts for their school, whether it was the FBS or the FCS level. This list is my top 10, right? My top 10 guys who are coming in as true freshmen of the 2022 class, who I genuinely believe can make an impact. Now, keep in mind, let's put a disclaimer out there right now. This is my top 10 list. I said it on Twitter, I'm gonna say it again. This is my top 10 list. If you don't agree with it, right? It's okay. You can let me know in the comments, hey, you know, CFL, um, I think such and such should have been on this list. I, that's fine. That's fine. We can talk about that, right? Don't get disrespectful, right? Because, like, none of this is personal. But let's get straight to it. Because starting off at number 10, we got my boy, right? Trey Glenf. Yeah, a kicker made this list, right? That's crazy. Trey Glenf is that guy. And I'm going to tell you why. I've been a I've been a Trey Glenn fan from the beginning, right? Since I found out he committed to Jackson State, and let me tell you why. Trey Glenn is the only freshman kicker who I've seen that has literally led his team in Georgia. First of all, he he came from a tough division in Georgia football in high school. Led his team throughout the season, throughout the playoffs. Every time his team didn't get a point, he came up with it. He carried his team throughout the playoffs. There was weeks when Trey Glenf was the top scorer on his team. This kid can kick it in the wind. It doesn't matter. He can kick it in any situation. Nothing, there's, he has ice in his veins. Understand me when I say that. Trey Glenf has ice in his veins. And coming to the SWAC where the kicking game was not that good. We all know that. Trey Glenf will, will most likely make an immediate impact for UAPB. All right? It sucks that we couldn't get him at Jackson State. You know, he's at UAPB now. I will remain a fan regardless of Trey Glenf. That's why he comes in at number 10 on this list. At number 9, we got a dude who I'm so excited about. He goes by the name of Kareem Burke, the wide receiver freshman for FAMU. Now, keep in mind... On the website, he's most likely rated a wide receiver or an athlete. He shouldn't be called neither. He should be a weapon. That should be special for Mr. Kareem Burke. You see, let me tell you what he does. Mr. Kareem Burke is the most versatile player other than Travis Hunter. He's the most versatile player in this class. What do I mean by that? Let me tell you. Kareem Burke is the first player in his high school's history to rush for a thousand yards and get a thousand yards receiving in the same season, right? On top, or just in or just in general, right? His senior year, 861 yards rushing, 600 yards plus receiving with seven touchdowns through the air, four touchdowns on the ground. On top of that, kick return, punt return. Oh, and by the way, he was also a part of the state championship relay team for his track team. So the boy got some speed on him. I have never seen a kid who comes out of high school and he's such a polished route runner. He's a route technician. That's what I love most about Kareem Burke. It ain't just the speed. He can really route you up real quick, right? I love that about him. And FAMU is only going to, going to continue to develop him. Personally, when I look at Kareem Burke, I do not see a kid that you put on the bench. I see a kid that you put the ball in his hands in any way, shape, or form. I just need the ball in his hands. As a matter of fact, who he reminds me of, I'm not saying he is, this, he is this player by any means necessary, so don't take my word for that. What I'm saying is, he reminds me of De'Anthony Thomas in his freshman year. And if I'm, if I'm Coach Willie Simmons, what I'm going to do is use him, like how Oregon used De'Anthony Thomas in his freshman year. Running, receiving, kick return, punt return, I'm going to keep him in that element. However he can help me is how he's going to help me. Right, Kareem Burke is just coming in at number eight, man. We have Mr. Tyson Bordo from Long Beach Poly High School. Right away, when you hear the name Long Beach Poly, you know, you know the 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 greatness that comes out of that program. So he's already solidified in my book. But I still had to go check him out when he first announced his commitment to Grambling State. And I said, wow, that is a big hire for Hugh Jack. That is a, a big signing for Hugh Jackson at 6'5", 180 pounds. Tyson Bordo is that guy. 
understand something. In just 45 receptions, this man had 800 plus yards and 15 touchdowns in his senior campaign. Now, I'm not saying he'll put up those numbers in his freshman year, but what I am saying with that wingspan of his, with that weight of his, not weight, with his height, how can you not utilize this kid? If anything, if he ain't, if he's not an every down receiver, which he probably won't be, red zone situations, I'm throwing it up. When I need that first down, when I need that touchdowns, I'm going to give Tyson Bordeaux a few chances. Because let's not forget, a lot of people look at his frame and they said, oh, he's too skinny. Maybe he needs to put weight on. Malachi Wyman ain't much bigger at Jackson State. And we saw what he did. Right, so Mr. Tyson Bordeaux, man, at 6'5", 180, I'm expecting big things out of this the number seven position. We got my favorite prospect in the 2022 class, and he's in the mid, right? He goes by the name of Marquise Bradley. How many times do I have to warn y'all about Marquise Bradley? Remember that name, because see, at 6'2", 200 pounds, the boy plays corner. And he's a true man corner with fluid hips. Oh, and he also runs a 4-4 with a very long wingspan. Now, let me tell you about Marquise Bradley. He comes from Gaffney High School. For those of you who are not familiar with Gaffney High School, all they do is put out D1 talent. All they do is put out Power 5 talent. This school is responsible for so many dogs, right? It's pitiful. They're one of the top schools in the state of South Carolina. That's how I know he's solidified, right? But watching him, watching him show out at the Clemson camp, watching his tape, watching him show out in the All-Star game, right? Literally watching this kid just use his incredible wingspan to just block off any catch radius for a receiver. It's, it's fun. It's fun to watch. That's what makes Marquise Bradley my favorite prospect. Now, as far as some of the playing time goes, keep in mind, South Carolina State has to replace the Kobe Durant. They, has to re they have to replace the Fear Kelly, even though Zafir Kelly played safety. They, they, they need DBs. They need that next guy. Marquise Bradley is that next guy. As a matter of fact, to me, he will be an NFL draft pick by the time he leaves South Carolina State. I promise you that. I'm banking on that. He is my favorite prospect in this 2022 class. So don't let him be in at number seven for you, okay? He's my he, he's on this list for All right, man, coming in at number six spot, we got Ryan Peppins. Listen, his him getting playing time in this freshman year is pretty much obvious at this point. I mean, even Coach Hugh Jackson said himself, he expects Ryan Peppins to come in and be a top guy in the SWAC this year. I'm paraphrasing about the rest, but he said this year, right? And I think one of the top athletes in the swipe was definitely included in that statement. But he said this year, the kid's getting on the field this year. And how could you not? This man has done nothing but produce in high school. I mean, three ch state championships on top of that Mr. Football in the state of Alabama. Kid could have been in the Pac-12. He chose to bring his talents to Grambling, which I am so glad he did. More talent to the HBCUs. But back to this kid. Man, the speed is tremendous. The playmaking is tremendous. It's off the charts. Nothing else. Like, I don't need to go in depth with Ryan Peppins. His tape speaks for itself. He's a bona fide playmaker. Okay? Slash you. He'll slash you in the slot. He will slash you in the slot, right? So I absolutely love Ryan Peppins. I love that pickup. That's why he's here at number six. The man is on a mission, right? In four years, his mission is to make sure that more undersized receivers or just players in general at the football level get more looks at, and he wants that to be because of him. He wants to leave a legacy at Grambling State, which I have no doubt in my mind that he will. Man, Ryan Peppins was going to step on the scene, and he's going to hit the ground running for Grambling State. Coach Hugh Jackson, he needs that guy. He's looking for the guy all across the board. I think he got one with Ryan Peppins, I'm sure. Hopefully you can find one at quarterback because we know he's he's still signing. But let me stop. I don't want nobody to get on. All right, y'all. Now we're in the top five. And this kid who comes in at the number five spot is Mr. Eden James. Now, when I first say his name, a lot of y'all might not, it might not ring a bell, right? Because James is a common last name. But he's the son of a four-time Pro Bowler, an NFL Hall of Famer, a man who was Rookie of the Year in the NFL. A guy who played for the University of Miami from 96 to 98. That's right, Mr. Edgerin James. He is the son of NFL Hall of Famer, NFL great Edgerin James. And he plays his father's position. Now listen, 
Edgerin is just like his father in a few ways. He's literally Houdini. What I mean by that is he's in and out. He's in and out. He can just teleport like that. If the hole is there, if the hole is right here, and he's all the way over here, in the blink of an eye, he's hitting the hole, and he's gone. He has the breakaway speed to do it. What I like about him, why I know he's going to have a big impact is because Howard has wasted no time in prioritizing him and making him a part of the offense. As a matter of fact, Eden James has been on campus before any of these freshmen on the list, as a matter of fact. He's played in the spring game. And he impressed in the spring game. His father was out there. His, uh, his father's former teammates were out there. He's impressed. Eden has ingratiated himself with the, Howard, uh, with the Howard School, with his classmates, with his teammates. He's ready to go. Oh, and on top of that, his father even guaranteed that he'd be ready to go. And why? When they asked him, he said, because I literally taught him everything that I know. He's ready for this. Those were the words of his father. Eden James is going to come out and he's going to have a spectacular season. A spectacular season. I cannot wait to see it. Hopefully Howard stays in the MIAC because this man, he, he going he gonna to carry Howard, no pun intended, for a long Coming time. in at the number four slot, we have Mr. Tyler Smith. Now, Tyler is also from Gaffney High School. But here's the thing about Tyler. The kid's a special talent. And he's one of the top players in this year's HBCU class. Period. Whether it's Miak or Swack, he's one of those guys. And let me tell you why. Coming from Gaffney, he was probably the biggest reason why his team, at that level of play, he's the biggest reason why his team was able to reach that state championship and winning. He had a lot to do with that. As a matter of fact, the reason why Tyler Smith is not at a power five school is because of his size, unfortunately. That's it. This kid is fast. This kid is elusive. This kid has great ball carrier vision. He can catch out of the backfield. He's a complete running back. He can even block. He will turn that corner. Tyler Smith is a guy who is going to pop off your screen every time he steps on the field. The only reason why he is not even top three to me is because, one, I love who I have at the number two spot, who also goes to, he's going to the same school he's going to. And number two, I have no idea. I know, I know they ain't going to redshirt him. He's going to at least get four games to see what he can do. But I, I'm not sure how many carries he's going to get because that backfield is so loaded for South Carolina State with just the freshman class alone. You still got Kendra Flowers, who's only a sophomore. You don't even know who's behind him because they've signed guys from recent classes, obviously. But Tyler Smith is going to be on that field. Coach Pugh knows he got to see what, what Tyler Smith can do. And I've been talking to people in that program. Tyler Smith. Remember that. And now we're at the top three. Y'all already know two of the top three, right? Travis Hunter and Kevin Coleman, this we know. But you don't know one guy, the, the last guy in the top three. And I'm very excited to tell you about him. But at the number three spot is Mr. Kevin Coleman. That's right. He's at number three. We'll get to number two in a minute because clearly you know Travis is number one. Come out in his first game and get like what? A couple scores or 200 yards or something like that. The goals are crazy for him, right? And when you see him play, when I've seen him against the, the DBs at Jackson State, I say to myself, he can damn well do it. Not only that, he's fast. He can contribute in kick return. Will he have to? Probably not. Will he have to contribute in punt return? Probably not. We don't know, right? But Kevin Coleman is a guy who you're going to see on the field for the first possession. I highly believe that. We know for a fact that Kevin Coleman has done enough so far. He's done a lot so far. He's been impressing Coach Brown. We know he's going to be on the field, and he's going to provide a major hand. Coming in at that number two slot, we have Cyrus Ellison. The 6'4", 205 wide receiver for South Carolina State. Now, I know y'all saying South Carolina State again. Who is Cyrus Ellison? Let me tell you. The kid looks like he's a junior in college right now. He already has college-ready size. Looks like he can be a defensive end. 
but he's playing receiver. He's a baby A.J. Brown who will catch the ball over you with little to no effort. Got to work on the route running a little bit, at least the finesse part of it. But he's a guy who's going to be the next star receiver for South Carolina State, especially after Shaquan Davis leaves. And then, I mean, they still got Rakeem White, who could also be the star receiver. You add this kid to the mix, you add Cyrus to the mix, they have a legit threat at wide receiver. South Carolina State does. Cyrus is that guy. Cyrus, man, y'all y'all gonna find out. Y'all gonna find out about Cyrus Ellison. And when you do, just know CFL told you first. All right? And coming in at the number one spot, duh, Travis Hunter. What, what more can we say about Travis? Two interceptions, two touchdowns in his spring game debut for Jackson State. Now, to Travis, he'll win, he'll win the Jerry Rice Award, swag newcomer, both sides of the ball. This is my top 10. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. You're watching the CFL podcast. Glad to be back after a week, right? <laughs> um, sorry for that. Things happen. Uh, but nothing bad, but you know, things happen. Um, but yeah, man, you're watching the CFL podcast. I go by the name of Kobe. I'm out.